good morning today we'll be discussing the second part of module 5 for the course ce206 on fluid mechanics 2 uh, for second year civil engineering students of kerala technological university uh, this lecture will be about water surface profiles so uh, we've already gone through one video lecture on gradually varied flow which is the first part of this module and the basics of gradually varied flow now water surface profiles will be about uh, the different shapes that the water surface can take in the open channel so we'll be discussing about this in detail now beforehand I, I can tell you this that this is a theory topic without much to buy heart this is a very simple topic and usually comes for very high marks and uh, there is a small derivation involved which can be asked or otherwise what is involved is how you plot the different profiles of the water surface and uh, how these shapes are actually uh, coming all these uh, will be what we'll be concentrating on in this lecture it's going to be a simple topic but at the same time it would be helpful if you can uh, plot the profiles along with the, the lecture as we are uh, going through the lecture you can uh, do it along with me so we will begin by dynamic equation for gradually varied flow in very wide rectangular channels uh, we have already gone through the dynamic equation for gradually varied flow which was uh, given by dy by dx is equal to s0 minus sf divided by 1 minus q squared by gyq which is one of the forms of the dynamic equation that we had discussed in the previous lecture so uh, before we move on into very wide rectangular channels i'll just uh, slightly change the uh, form of this equation we all know that critical depth yc is given by q squared by g raised to 1 by 3 we had studied this in module 4 so the equation dy by dx is equal to s0 minus sf divided by 1 minus q squared by gy cube contains the term q squared by g so q squared by g is equal to yc cube so i'm going to replace q squared by g equal to yc cube in the dynamic equation so i'll get dy by dx is equal to s0 minus sf divided by 1 minus yc by y the whole cube now uh, let the equation remain here now i'm going to do a little bit more approximation to this equation uh, with the context of a very wide rectangular channel so let's just check what do you mean by a very wide rectangular channel so this is a shape of a very wide rectangular channel the speciality of a very wide rectangular channel is that the width of the channel is much much greater than the depth of the channel so if i'm discussing about the hydraulic mean depth we all know the formula for hydraulic mean depth is equal to area of cross section divided by the wetted perimeter so uh, from the shape that has been drawn area of cross section is b into y and the wetted perimeter is width plus two times the depth which is b plus two y but the denominator b plus two y since b is much much greater than y can be approximated to be b so r will approximately be equal to b into y divided by b which means that the hydraulic mean depth would be equal to y so in very wide rectangular channels the hydraulic mean depth would be equal to y now we'll continue with the derivation so equation for discharge in a gradually varied flow is given by q is equal to a by n r raised to 2 by 3 into s f raised to 1 by 2 we have discussed this in the previous lecture i have used energy line slope sf instead of uh, bed slope s0 uh, and this is manning's equation that i've used here at normal depth we know that y is equal to y n that is that when the flow is uniform y is equal to y n and s f becomes equal to s naught so i'll substitute these values back in that uh, equation i will get q is equal to area by n area is b into y n the hydraulic mean depth i have substituted it as y n because for very wide rectangular channels we just saw that hydraulic mean depth becomes equal to y so hydraulic mean depth i've substituted it as y n and s f i have substituted it as s naught because i'm talking about normal depth this is the first equation 
Now at a general depth y, q becomes py by n into y raised to 2 by 3 sf raised to 1 by 2. This is at any other general depth. The first equation was for normal depth and the second equation was for a general depth y. Now what I am going to do is I am going to divide these equations 1 divided by 2. It's the same discharge. Uh, one of the, in, in equation 1, the discharge is flowing at normal depth. And in equation 2, the discharge is flowing at a general depth y. So, equation 1 divided by equation 2 will give me 1 is equal to yn by y raised to 5 by 3 into s naught by sf raised to 1 by 2. All the other terms will get cancelled off. So, I will get sf by s naught raised to 1 by 2. I took sf by s naught raised to 1 by 2 to the other side is equal to y n by y raised to 5 by 3. So s f by s naught will become y n by y raised to 10 by 3. I hope you are doing this along with me because if just looking at the derivation you will not be able to figure it out. It's a simple derivation if you do along with uh, the lecture as the lecture is going on. If you were working it out along with me it would be much much more simpler. So I got s f by s naught is equal to y n by y raised to 10 by 3. Now, I will write 1 minus SF, my S, uh, SF by S0 will be equal to 1 minus YN by Y raised to 10 by 3. I will tell you why I have done this. Now, I will take S0 as the LCM and S0 minus SF divided by S0 is equal to 1 minus YN by Y raised to 10 by 3. So, this is because I want uh, the value or an expression for S0 minus SF. Uh, as you would have remembered, dy by dx, the numerator of dy by dx is s0 minus sf. So, instead of s0 minus sf, I got an expression s0 minus sf is equal to s0 into 1 minus yn by y raised to 10 by 3. So, in the beginning of uh, this derivation, we know that dy by dx, we had written it as s0 minus sf divided by 1 minus yc by y, the whole cube. Now, I am going to substitute the value of S0 by SF, S0 minus SF as S0 into 1 minus YN by Y raised to 10 by 3. And so, dy by dx, I will get it as S0 into 1 minus YN by Y raised to 10 by 3 divided by 1 minus YC by Y the whole cube. And so, this is the dynamic equation for gradually varied flow in a very wide rectangular channel. So, this was the derivation that I was talking to you about. This is the single derivation in this particular lecture, but it is a very important one because it is based on this formula that we are going to move ahead. dy by dx, which is the change in water surface slope uh, with distance, is equal to s0 into 1 minus yn by y raised to 10 by 3 divided by 1 minus yc by y raised to 3. So, when we used, uh, you would remember that in the derivation we had used. Manning's equation to write the equation for discharge q is equal to a by n r raised to 2 by 3 sf raised to 1 by 2 and we ended up getting this expression for gradually varied flow in very wide rectangular channels. But you would remember that Manning's equation is not the only equation for gradually, uh, for gradually varied flow. We can also use Chazy's equation instead of Manning's equation to represent gradually varied flow as c root of r sf. Now instead of using Manning's equation in the derivation, if I had used Chazy's equation, I would have ended up with a slightly different formula and that would have been dy by dx is equal to s0 into 1 minus yn by y the whole cube divided by 1 minus yc by y the whole cube. So you would see here that it's a slight change here when I used Manning's equation in the derivation I got it as raised to 10 by 3 yn by y raised to 10 by 3. Whereas if I use Chazy's equation, I would get yn by y raised to 3. Now as you would know, 10 by 3 is 3.333. So it's close. It's very close. However, it's not the same. Now it's happening like this because your expression for gradually varied flow in very wide rectangular channels is basically an approximation. And so uh, depending on the uh, equation that we are using, we might get different values for dy by dx. Now you can all actually rework the derivation and maybe you can see if you are getting the expression using Chazy's equation as the one mentioned. 
so what you can do is you try to derive the dynamic equation for gradually varied flow in very wide rectangular channels by using chezy's equation for gradually varied flow we had uh, earlier worked out uh, using manning's equation you can use chezy's equation to work out this derivation and see if you are getting the answer that is uh, that is looking at on on the screen now we move ahead to classification of channel bottom slopes so the channel bottom uh, the channel bottom slopes can be classified into five they are mild slope steep slope critical slope horizontal slope and adverse slope and the classification is based on the relative positions of the normal depth which is yn and critical depth yc of the flow through the channel so if the flow was taking place as normal depth its depth would be yn if the flow is taking place as critical flow its depth would be yc and comparing yn and yc we would get the channel bottom slope how we do it uh, i'll be explaining in the coming slides so let's start with mild slope when the normal depth of flow is greater than the critical depth of flow the channel bottom slope is known as a mild slope so here i have the channel bottom let's say that this is the normal depth of flow so if the flow was occurring as normal flow normal uh, uniform flow then this would have been the flow depth and i have represented it as yn at the same time if the flow with the same discharge was happening as critical flow then this would have been the flow depth i am denoting it as yc so here you can see that yn is greater than yc and that is the condition for mild slope when the normal depth of flow is greater than the critical depth of flow the channel bottom slope is called a mild slope why n so i have marked ndl here ndl and cdl where ndl is the normal depth level and cdl is the critical depth level so uh, here you can see that why n this is a mild sloped channel because why n is greater than yc so that is the classification of a mild slope uh, when do you say a channel uh, slope is mild a channel slope is said to be mild depending on the relative positions of its normal depth and critical depth if normal depth is greater than critical depth then the channel slope is known as a mild slope channel the next classification of channel bottom slope was steep slope when the normal depth of flow is lesser than the critical depth of flow then the channel bottom slope is known as a steep slope so when the water is flowing as normal depth it would have normal depth of flow uh, when when the flow is happening as uniform flow the de flow depth would be normal depth and when the flow is happening as critical flow the flow depth would be critical depth and if it so happens that this is the channel bottom and this is the normal depth of flow and this happens to be the critical depth of flow then this is the critical depth level and this is the normal depth level so here you can see that this is a steep sloped channel and this happens basically because the critical depth yc as you can see here is greater than yn so when critical depth is greater than normal depth the slope is known as steep slope next we come to critical slope the third classification of the channel bottom slope was known as critical slope when the normal depth of flow is equal to the critical depth of flow the channel bottom slope is known as critical slope so here you can see this is the channel bottom this is the normal depth level and this is the critical depth level yn and yc are equal because uh, the, uh, it is said that uh, when the slope is at critical slope then the normal depth of flow and critical depth of flow are equal so here this particular channel bottom is a critically sloped channel because yc here is equal to yn so it's uh, kind of simple if yn is greater than yc the slope is mild slope if yc is greater than yn the slope is steep slope and if yc is equal to yn then the slope is critical slope the fourth classification was horizontal slope now horizontal slope is when the channel bottom slope is equal to zero that is if it's horizontal the slope is horizontal s not is equal to 0 then the slo uh, slope is known as a horizontal slope now what you have to understand about horizontal slope is that when the channel slope is horizontal normal depth lies at infinity that it that is it cannot be attained uh, for a horizontal slope channel normal depth cannot be attained so this is a normal depth channel you can see that it's horizontal this is the critical depth level and this is the critical depth 
this is your y n we cannot see y n because it is tending to infinity y n exists at infinity because it is very difficult to attain normal depth in a horizontal slope channel so this is a horizontal slope channel and as you can see here y n is equal to infinity the next and the final classification of channel bottom slope is an adverse slope an adverse slope is when the channel bottom slope instead of falling it rises in the direction of flow that is uh, the bottom slope is actually instead of aiding the flow it is trying to go opposite to the direction of flow the flow is happening upstream to downstream the slope is going downstream to upstream uh, uh, the slope is going in the opposite direction downstream to upstream so here for an adverse slope channel normal depth is imaginary like uh, it's not possible to attain normal depth it's imaginary or non existent in the case of an adverse slope so here s not is negative that is uh, if you compare with the previous slopes you can see that it's in the opposite direction and this is the critical depth level and there is no normal depth because it is imaginary here cdl is the critical depth so this is an adverse slope channel because normal depth yn is imaginary so this is the five different types of channel bottom slopes next we move on to the most important part of this lecture which is classification of water surface profiles so various water surface profiles occurring in the channels are designated with reference to the bottom slopes of the channels the surface profiles occurring in the mild channels are called m curves so the type of water profile or the shape of water surface occurring in mild channels are called m curves the surface profiles occurring in steep channels are called s curves designated by the starting letter of the word steep and in mild channels it is the starting letter of the word mild so m curves in mild channels s curves in steep channels all these are the shapes of the water surface occurring in the respective channels likewise the surface profiles occurring in the critical channels are called c curves the surface profiles occurring in the horizontal channels are called h curves and the surface profiles occurring in the adverse sloped channels are called a curves so these are the five different types of water surface profiles that we will be studying uh, later on so we'll start with uh, the important one which is m curve so this is a mild sloped channel as you can see here that yn is greater than yc this is yn and this is yc the normal depth level is greater than the critical depth level and hence we can understand that this is a mild slope now there are three zones in a mild sloped channel i'll show you those three zones this is zone 1 this is zone 2 this is zone 3 so you can see that these two horizontal lines here are cutting the profile the channel into three zones the first zone is here above the normal depth level zone 2 is between the critical depth level and normal depth level and zone 3 is between the channel bottom and the critical depth level so there are three zones now if water depth that is suppose the water is flowing here that is the depth of flow of water as you can see this is the depth of flow of water why it's a gradually varied flow so slightly uh, the flow depth is varying <coughs> but you can see that the flow depth occurs in zone 1 then y is greater than yn and greater than yc so if the flow of water occurs in zone 1 then this particular shape that the water takes the water surface takes is called an m1 curve now m1 stands for mild channel zone 1 curve so in short we call it m1 curve the water surface profile occurring in a mild channel inside zone 1 is known as an m1 curve now if the water profile or the water surface was actually in zone 2 that is the water depth fell in between the normal depth and the critical depth then it would be in zone 2 so if the water depth occurs in zone 2 then yn is greater than y is greater than yc the water surface profile is called an m2 curve m for mild 2 for zone 2 it's called an m2 curve okay so uh, and the third one is when water surface occurs in zone 3 that is the surface of water 
the depth of water is less than critical depth less than normal depth y n greater than y c greater than y then it occurs in zone 3 of the mild channel and hence this particular shape of the water surface would be known as m3 or mild channel zone 3 m3 curve so what you have to understand from here is that the water surface can occur either in zone 1 or in zone 2 or in zone 3 okay it, it is not uh, it will not occur in zone 1 and zone 2 together or zone 3 and zone uh, zone 2 together nothing like that if water is flowing it will be individually uh, flowing either in zone 1 or in zone 2 or in zone 3 so depending on the flow depth we will classify them as an m1 curve or an m2 curve or an m3 curve if they are flowing in zone 1 it becomes an m1 curve if they are flowing in zone 2 it becomes an m2 curve and if they are flowing in zone 3 it becomes an m3 curve m standing for mild and 1 2 3 uh, denoting the zones now we move on to the s curves or the curves water surface curves in a steep channel so this is a steep channel as you know that in steep channels the critical depth is greater than the normal depth so here yc is greater than yn this is the channel bottom normal depth level is below the critical depth level so there are three zones in a steep slope channel just like in mild zone channel uh, in steep slope channel also there are three zones zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 so if the water surface profile occurred in zone 1 that is y is greater than yc is greater than yn the water surface profile would be called an s1 curve as you can see here this is an s1 curve if the water surface uh, occurred in zone 2 that is y lies between yc and yn then the water surface profile is called an s2 curve and if the water surface profile occurred in zone 3 that is yc is greater than y n is greater than y the water surface profile is called an s3 curve so there are three types of water surfaces possible in a steep slope channel water can flow either as an s1 curve or as an s2 curve or as an s3 curve depending on which zone they are flowing in we come to the c curves next c curves are curves that are uh, representing the water surfaces in the critical channel so this is the critical slope channel here as you know or as we have discussed critical slope channel yc is equal to yn critical depth level and normal depth level are uh, in the uh, along the same path they are on the same line this they are coinciding yc is equal to yn so there are two zones in a critical slope channel uh, in your um, in your uh, mild slope channel as well, as well as in your steep slope channel there had been uh, three zones but in a critical slope channel you can see that there are only two zones these are zone one and zone three now automatically you would think that there is actually supposed to be a zone two why did i name it zone three instead of zone two the reason is that the zone two is actually there but it's lying sandwiched between the critical depth level and the normal depth level so see normal depth level and critical depth level are coinciding so there is a small there is a layer there in between cdl and ndl because they're coinciding it's sandwiched so zone 2 is sandwiched between them so above you have zone 1 below you have zone 3 zone 2 is the actually the uh, sandwiched layer between the CDL and NDL as they are coinciding and so that layer can, that uh, zone cannot be seen so if water depth occurs in zone 1 that means the flow depth is greater than uh, yn uh, which is equal to yc then the water surface profile is known as a c1 curve at same time if the water surface uh, occurred in zone 3 it would have been yc equal to yn greater than y that is y is lesser than yc and yn then this particular water surface depth would be known as a c3 curve so there are actually uh, two curves in critical channel which is c1 curve and c3 curve there is no c2 curve because zone 2 is not there it is sandwiched between cdl and ndl so you have a c1 curve standing for critical sloped curve in zone 1 and the c3 curve standing for a critical sloped 
uh, channel curve in zone 3. So, uh, these are the curves in the critical uh, channel, uh, critical slope channel. So, next we move on to edge curves. Edge curves are the water surface curves that are found in horizontal channel. So, here is a horizontal channel. In a horizontal channel, the slope is horizontal, which means S0 is 0. Uh, as you know, Yn is at infinity. So, there is no uh, normal depth is at infinity and Yc is uh, here and this is the critical depth level. So, like the critical uh, sloped channel, horizontal sloped channel also has only two zones, which are zone 2 and zone 3. Since NDL is at infinity, because you can see there is no NDL here, NDL is outside, we can't, we can't see it, it's above and at infinity and so zone 1 cannot be seen. Zone 1 is the zone that is above NDL, so it cannot be seen. So what is seen is zone 2 and zone 3. So in horizontal slope channel, there is zone 2 and zone 3, these are the two zones, there is no zone 1 because it is lying at infinity. So, if the water surface uh, depth occurred in zone 2 of this channel, it would be known as an H2 curve, standing for horizontal slope channel, zone 2 curve. And uh, the flow depth would be lying between Yn and Yc. If at the same time, the water depth occurred in zone 3, then uh, it would be known as an H3 curve, standing for horizontal slope channel, zone 3 uh, curve type of curves are A curves standing for curves in adverse slope channels. So, this is an adverse slope channel, S0 is negative, that is it is sloping opposite and there is the critical depth level, there is no normal depth here because it is non-existent. So, uh, there, here also there are only two zones in an adverse slope channel, the zone 2 and zone 3. Since normal depth does not exist, zone 1 does not exist. So, we have only zone 2 and zone 3 in an adverse slope channel and hence we have only two curves which will be A2 and A3. So, if the flow depth is greater than Yc then the water surface profile is called an A2 curve and if the water surface depth is lesser than the critical depth then the curve would be called an A3 curve standing for adverse slope zone 3 curve. Now, uh, you have discussed or we have seen the different types of curves uh, in all the different uh, slope channels which was mild, steep, critical, horizontal and adverse. Now what we are going to discuss next is how to plot these curves. So the shapes that you had seen of these uh, surface uh, profiles, they were very random, I had simply drawn it. Uh, however, they can't be drawn like that they have a specific shape and that has to be shown. So, how to plot an M1 curve is what we are going to discuss next. So, as you all know, M1 curve is a curve that occurs in the zone 1 of a mild slope channel. This is a mild slope channel. How do I know this is a mild slope channel? Yn is greater than Yc. So, there are three zones here. Zone 1, when, when I am talking about M1, it is a mild sloped channel and a curve that occurs in zone 1. So, let us discuss how to plot an M1 curve. Now, once you understand, an uh, you know, M1 curve will take some time for you to understand. Maybe you will have to rewind the video a little. Uh, after I explain M1 curve, you can rewind it uh, and then listen to it again. But once you understand how to plot M1 curve, uh, it will be very easy to plot M2, M3, S1, S2, S3, H2, H3, C2, uh, sorry, C1, C3, A2, A3, all the curves would be very simple because it follows the same procedure. So, let us first discuss M1 curve. In zone 1 of the mild slope channel, Y, that is the flow depth, would be greater than Yn and Yc. So, Y would be greater than Yn and Yc in zone 1. So, if the water is flowing in zone 1, then it would be, flow depth would be greater than both Yn as well as Yc. So, limits of y are from yn to infinity because this is the limit of zone 1. Zone 1 limits are from yn to infinity. Okay. The lower limit of zone 1 is the normal depth level yn and the upper limit is infinity. Okay. So, these are the limits of zone 1 yn to infinity. Now, 
the dynamic equation uh, of uh, GVF in very wide rectangular channels is dy by dx is equal to s0 into 1 minus yn by y raised to 10 by 3 divided by 1 minus yc by y raised to 3. This was the derivation that we had done in the beginning and kept aside. Now, to plot these curves, we require dy by dx. This equation for dynamic equation for gradually varied flow in very wide rectangular channels are required to plot the curves. So, the first step to plot the M1 curve is to check the sign of dy by dx in this zone. That is whether the dy by dx value would be positive or negative in this zone that has to be found out. How do we find that out? So, the limits are from yn to infinity. Now, what happens from yn to infinity to dy by dx? If you take the numerator, that is s0 into 1 minus yn by y raised to 10 by 3. So, y is a value in zone 1 y is a value that lies between y n to infinity so y is greater than y n so y n by y as a fraction would be a value less than 1 so a number less than 1 raised to 10 by 3 whatever be the value of y in zone 1 it would be 1 minus a number less than 1 raised to 10 by 3 so 1 minus a number less than 1 raised to 10 by 3 would always be a positive value and so the numerator is positive. Let's look at the denominator. Denominator is 1 minus yc by y the whole cube. y is a value that is greater than yc. So the fraction yc by y would be a number less than 1. So 1 minus a number less than 1 the whole cube would be a positive value. So the numerator is also positive in zone 1. The denominator is also positive in zone 1 which means in zone 1 dy by dx has a positive sign. Now uh, what are the implications of this we will check later on but that is the first step. Check the sign of dy by dx in the zone that you are considering. So I want to plot the m1 curve. My zone is zone 1. So in zone 1 what would be the sign of dy by dx I just found out it would be positive. Numerator is also positive. Denom denominator is also positive. Step 2 would be to check the value of dy by dx at the lower limit. Now in zone 1 the lower limit is y equal to yn. So lower limit is y equal to yn. So I am going to check what would be the value of dy by dx at the lower limit. So this is the value for dy by dx or the equation for dy by dx in very wide rectangular channels. So the numerator is s0 into 1 minus yn by yn raised to 10 by 3. This general dis, uh, limit, this general value of y I have substituted with lower limit value yn. So yn by yn is 1. So 1 minus 1. Numerator would be 0. Denominator is 1 minus yc by y the whole cube. y I have replaced it with yn. So 1 minus yc by yn the whole cube. Uh, this would be a positive number because yc is less than yn. This would be a, a number less than 1. So 1 minus a number less than 1 would give me a positive number. So the numerator is 0, denominator is a positive number. And so the value of dy by dx at the lower limit y equal to yn would be 0. 0 by a positive number would be 0. So at the lower limit, the value of dy by dx is equal to 0. Step 3 would be to check the value of dy by dx at the upper limit. For zone 1, upper limit is infinity. So, dy by dx is given by this equation. I am going to check the value of the numerator when I substitute y equal to infinity. yn by infinity, some fraction like this is equal to 0. So, 1 minus 0 is 1. s0 into 1 would give me s0. So the numerator's value is s0. Denominator is given by 1 minus yc by y the whole cube. y I have substituted it as infinity. This would become 0 and so the denominator's value would be equal to 1. Therefore at y equal to infinity which is the upper limit the value of dy by dx is s0. So I found out the sign of dy by dx in zone 1 and the values of dy by dx upstream, sorry, at the uh, lower limit and at the upper limit of the uh, zone 1. So now I am going to plot the m1 curve. 
now uh, pay attention to this clearly because i'm going to use step 1 step 2 and step 3 to plot m1 curve from step 1 i found out that dy by dx is positive in zone 1 so what does this imply or what does this mean the meaning of dy by dx being positive in zone 1 is that the water level increases with distance in zone 1 it's positive means water level is rising so water level increases with zone 1 so i'm going to plot the water surface here there the water surface is increasing with distance in zone 1 so i have drawn a line that is increasing with distance in zone 1 this shows the water surface profile in zone 1 okay now this is not complete i require the values at the lower limit and the upper limit to get the uh, or to complete plotting the m1 curve so from step 2 i found out that dy by dx is equal to 0 what is meant by dy by dx becoming equal to 0 when y tends to y n the that is at the lower limit normal depth level the water surface is asymptotical to the ndl when you say that dy by dx is equal to 0 it means that the um, tangent it is tangential to this particular line at the lower limit the uh, water surface curve would be tangential so where as y tends to y n you can see that it's tangential or it is becoming asymptotical to ndl asymptotical means reaches out to okay reaches but never touches that is what is meant by asymptotical so the curve is asymptotical to the normal depth level that is what we have obtained from or that is what is our implication of step 2 now step 3 we found out the value of dy by dx at the upper limit we found out that dy by dx is equal to s not s not is the uh, slope of the channel bottom so what is meant by dy by dx equal to s not when y tends to infinity which is the upper limit water surface tends to be parallel to the channel bottom that is this upper surface uh, as the uh, zone 1 tends to infinity the water surface tends to be parallel to the channel bottom that is what is meant by dy by dx is equal to s not so i've drawn a whole curve here it rises in the direction of uh, flow and at as it tends to infinity it becomes parallel to the channel bottom and as it tends to normal depth level it becomes asymptotical to the normal depth level so this is the m1 curve and this is how you plot the m1 curve so step 1 step 2 and step 3 we will put it together in step 4 to plot the curve now we will plot m2 m3 s1 s2 s3 etc so that you become uh, clear about this concept let's plot m2 curve m2 curve is a curve that occurs in zone 2 of a mild slope channel so again this is a mild slope channel this is yn and this is yc yn greater than yc so in zone 2 of mild slope channel the limits of y are between yn and yc this is the limits of zone 2 so limits of y are from yc to yn the lower limit is yc and the upper limit is yn okay so these are the limits of zone 2 so considering the dynamic equation in very wide rectangular channels which is this equation that we have considered i am going to start with step 1 step 2 and step 3 that i had done for uh, m1 curve as well step 1 i am going to check the sign of dy by dx in zone 2 between yc to yn what happens to the numerator so y is less than yn and so this number will be a number that is greater than 1 so yn by y is a number that is greater than 1 because y is lesser than yn so 1 minus a number greater than 1 is a negative value so your numerator is negative denominator on the other hand is 1 minus yc by y y is greater than yc in zone 2 and so the denominator would be 1 minus a number less than 1 which would be a positive value and so the sign of dy by dx would be negative by positive and hence the value of dy by dx would be negative in zone 2 that is step 1 in step 2 i'm going to check the value of dy by dx at the lower limit the lower limit of zone 2 is yc so this is the equation for gradually varied flow in very wide rectangular channels when i substitute y with the value yc i will get 1 minus yn by yc raised to 10 by 
yc is a number that is less than yn so this fraction would be a value greater than 1 and so 1 minus a value greater than 1 would give me a negative number so numerator is a negative number on the other hand if i check the denominator i substitute y with yc yc by yc is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so denominator becomes 0 therefore at y equal to yc which is the lower limit dy by dx is a number divided by 0 which is infinity anything divided by 0 would give me infinity now we'll check the value of dy by dx at the upper limit at upper limit y is equal to y n uh, so i'm going to substitute it in the dynamic equation for gradually varied flow numerator is equal to s naught into 1 minus y n by y n y has been substituted by n so numerator becomes 0 denominator is 1 minus y c by y n y c is a value that is uh, great lesser than y n and so y c by y n would be a number less than 1 and so denominator would be a positive number and so therefore at y equal to y n which is the upper limit we have dy by dx equal to 0 divided by a positive number which is 0 so this is the uh, value of dy by dx at the upper limit of zone 2 so we move on to plotting the curve m2 curve so we'll use step 1 in step 1 we found out that dy by dx is negative this means that water level is decreasing with increase in distance and so this is the first part of the curve you can see that the water surface is falling with increasing distance water surface is going down now we'll take, uh, take, uh, take the upper and lower limits. The lower limit dy by dx is infinity. What do you mean by dy by dx is infinity? dy by dx is infinity or when does the tan theta value become infinity? Tan value becomes, at, uh, becomes equal to infinity when it touches at 90 degree. So what is meant by dy by dx equal to infinity is that as y tends to yc, it will be normal. Normal means 90 degrees to the critical depth level that is you can see here it is meeting cdl at 90 degree okay now the upper surface upper limit is dy by dx equal to zero that's what we had found out zero means that it is asymptotical and so as y tends to y uh, y n water surface will be asymptotical to the normal depth level so here you can see that it is reaching out to the ndl so we have completed plotting m2 this is the m2 curve dy by dx is negative so it's falling uh, dy by dx is infinity at uh, y tends to yc so it's normal to cdl and dy by dx equal to 0 as y tends to ndl so it is asymptotical to the ndl and this is your m2 curve this is how you plot your m2 curve next we are going to plot the m3 curve in zone 3 of our mild slope channel the limits are y between 0 and yc it's 0 and yc these are the limits of zone 3 so lower limit is 0 upper limit is yc considering dynamic equation i'm going for step 1 step 2 and step 3 a repeat of what i have done for the previous two curves i'm going to check the sign of dy by dx between 0 to yc so when the flow depth is between 0 to yc yn by y is a value that is going to be um, greater than 1 because y is going to be less than yn and yn by y would be greater than 1 so 1 minus a number greater than 1 would be a negative number so numerator is negative denominator is 1 minus yc by y y is lesser than yc as well so yc by y would be a number greater than 1 so 1 is a number greater than 1 would give a negative value so i have numerator as negative denominator as negative which means my dy by dx would be a positive value this is because negative by negative is going to give me a positive value step 2 would be to check the limits value of dy by dx at the lower limit lower limit is y equal to 0 so this is the equation I'm going to substitute y equal to 0 the numerator is going to be s naught into 1 minus y n by 0 y n by 0 is infinity so whatever be the other remaining values numerator is going to be infinity similarly denominator is 1 minus y c by 0 yc by 0 is infinity and so the whole denominator is going to become infinity and so the value at y equal to 0 is dy by dx is equal to infinity infinity by infinity is infinity 
Now we are going to check the upper limit, which is CDL or Y equal to YC. I am going to substitute in the dynamic equation. Numerator becomes S0 into 1 minus YN by YC raised to 10 by 3. YN by YC is a value greater than 1. So it is a negative number. Denominator is 1 minus YC by YC. YC by YC becomes 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And so fraction dy by dx at y equal to yc is a number divided by 0 which is equal to infinity. So we have found out the value of dy by dx at the upper limit, at the lower limit and we have also checked the sign of dy by dx and now we move on to plotting the m3 curve. So this is the uh, channel and we are going to plot the m3 curve. We found out that dy by dx is positive. This implies that water level is increasing with distance and so we have a curve that is rising in zone 3. Lower limit that is y equal to 0 dy by dx is infinity. dy by dx equal to infinity means meeting normally. So it is meeting normally with the lower limit that is at y tends to 0. Water surface is normal to the channel bottom. So that you can see here it is meeting normally. And at the upper limit also is infinity which means upper limit also it is meeting perpendicularly at y tends to yc. Uh, water surface tends to be normal. So you can see this is also uh, meeting at 90 degree to the CDL and this is the M3 curve. So I have used the same technique to plot M1, M2 and M3. The same three steps, the same four steps I have followed to plot M1, M2 and M3. Depending on the value or the range in which Y lies, the signs tend to change, the values tend to change, but the method is exactly the same. Basically, this is a uh, combined plot of M1, M2 and M3, if water flew, uh, uh, water was flowing in the um, first zone of a mild channel, this was how its shape would have been. It would have been a backwater curve. Backwater curve, I hope you remember, is when the water surface depth increases with uh, the increase in uh, distance. Zone 2, uh, M2 is a drawdown curve and in zone 3, M3 curve is a backwater curve again. So when you increase, uh, it is a backwater curve and when the flow depth decreases, it is a drawdown curve. This is something that we studied in the previous lecture. And this is a consolidated figure of M1, M2 and M3 curves. Next, we will learn to plot the S1 curve. Method is one the same. So I will be slightly increasing the speed in which I am explaining. So you can see that uh, this uh, figure is that of a uh, steep slope. Because YC is greater than YN, it's divided into three zones, zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. CDL is above NDL. Now we'll check S1 curve. We are going to plot the S1 curve. So zone 1, we are going to check the limits of zone 1. Y would be greater than YC and YN. And the limits of Y are from YC to infinity. The lower limit would be YC and the upper limit would be infinity. Again, the dynamic equation. I am going to check the sign of dy by dx uh, like I did in the previous m curves. The numerator between yc to infinity. yc means the numerator y value is greater than both yn and yc but lesser than infinity. And so the numerator yn by y would be a value that is lesser than 1. So 1 minus a value less than 1 would be a positive value. Denominator also yc by y, y is greater than yc. So denominator also yc by y is a value that is less than 1. So 1 minus a value less than 1 is positive which means dy by dx would be positive. The next step would be to check the values at the upper and lower limit. We will check the lower limit first. The lower limit of zone 1 is yc. This is the uh, value of dy by dx. The numerator would be one s naught into 1 minus yn by yc instead of y I have replaced it as yc yn by yc is a value that is less than 1. So 1 minus a value less than 1 is a positive number. The denominator is 1 minus yc by y the whole cube. yc by yc is uh, 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Which means dy by dx at y equal to yc would be a number divided by infinity. Which would be sorry a number divided by 0 which would be infinity. At the upper limit. Uh, the, the upper limit of zone 1 is infinity. So I am going to substitute the value of y as infinity in the equation. Numerator would be uh, yn by infinity. yn by infinity would be 0. So 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. So numerator is s naught. 
denominator 1 minus yc by infinity the whole cube this term would go to 0 so denominator is 1 therefore at y equal to infinity dy by dx becomes s0 so this is the channel I'm going to plot the s1 curve so you can see that this is a steep channel CDL is above the NDL to plot the S1 curve, we'll use step 1, step 2 and step 3 that we were discussing about. We found dy by dx to be positive in zone 1. Hence, water level increases in with distance in zone 1. So, you can see that it's a <coughs> uh, value increasing, uh, the value of water depth is increasing with distance. At the lower limit, dy by dx is infinity, which means it's meeting normally to the CDL, which is the lower limit. So you can see that it is meeting at 90 degree. At the upper limit it is S0 so it is parallel to the channel bottom at as y tends to infinity and so you can see that the water surface is becoming uh, parallel to the channel bottom. So this is the S1 curve. S2 curve in zone 2 the limits are between yc and yn. So y lies between yc and yn. Lower limit is yn, upper limit is yc. Because in steep slope channel, yc is greater than yn. So dynamic equation is considered. Step 1, check the sign of dy by dx between yn and yc. Uh, y lies uh, between yn and yc. yc is greater than yn. Since y is greater than yn in zone 2, yn by y would be a value less than 1. So the numerator would be a positive value. Denominator on the other hand, yc by y is a fraction that is going to be greater than 1 and so 1 minus a number greater than 1 would give me a negative value and so dy by dx in zone 2 of the steep slope channel is going to be negative. Step 2 is to check the limit at uh, lower limit what is the value of dy by dx the lower limit is y equal to yn in zone 2 the limit is yn. So numerator when I substitute y equal to yn I will get it as equal to 0 yn by yn is 1 denominator yc by yn uh, would be a value that is greater than 1 because yc is greater than yn and 1 minus a value greater than 1 would give me a negative number so 0 by a number dy by dx at y equal to yn would be 0. Step 3 is to check the dy by dx value at the upper limit. The upper limit of uh, the S2 curve is y equal to yc. This is the dynamic equation. Numerator I am substituted y with yc. yn is less than yc so this is a number that is less than 1 and 1 minus a number less than 1 is a positive number. Denominator is 1 minus yc by yc the whole cube. yc by yc is 1 and so 1 minus 1 would become 0. So at y equal to yc dy by dx is equal to a number divided by 0 which would give infinity. To plot the S2 curve we found that dy by dx is negative in zone 2. And so the water depth is falling in zone 2. The water depth you found out to be falling. At the lower limit dy by dx is equal to 0. When you mean dy by dx is equal to 0, it means that it is tangential or asymptotical to the normal depth level. And so you can see that it is reaching out to the normal depth level but never actually touching it. Upper limit is uh, CDL. We found out that dy by dx was infinity which means it's going to meet normally with the CDL and Thus, our S2 curve is complete. This is how we plot the S2 curve. Now, we are going to plot the S3 curve using the same method. The limits are the only things that are changing. Y lies between Yn and 0. This is where Y is going to lie in this zone. Upper limit is Yn and lower limit is 0. So, the dynamic equation is considered. The step 1 would be to check the sign of dy by dx between 0 and Yn. Uh, the value of numerator would be 1 minus a number greater than 1 because y is less than yn and so yn by y would be a number greater than 1 and 1 minus a number greater than 1 would give a negative value. yc by y would again be a negative value because yc by y is a fraction that is less greater than 1 so 1 minus a value greater than 1 would give me a negative value and so dy by dx is negative by negative that would give me a positive value. The next step is to check the values of dy by dx at the upper and lower limit. 
lower limit is y equal to 0. So, I am going to substitute it in the dynamic equation. Numerator would be s0 into 1 minus yn by 0 raised to 10 by 3. yn by 0 is infinity. So, the whole numerator goes to infinity. Denominator is also yc by 0 becoming infinity. So, whole denominator goes to infinity. Therefore, at 0, y equal to 0 which is the lower limit, dy by dx is infinity. Now, let's check the value of dy by dx at the upper limit. Upper limit is y equal to yn. dy by dx is s0. Uh, this equation that had been given. So, numerator is s0 into 1 minus yn by yn raised to 10 by 3 because I have substituted the value of y equal to yn. 1 minus 1 is 0. So, numerator is 0. Denominator is 1 minus yc by yn the whole cube. yc is greater than yn. So, it is a uh, fraction, positive fraction greater than 1. That is 1 minus a value greater than 1 would give a negative number. Therefore, 0 by a negative number at y equal to yn would give dy by dx as equal to 0. Plus a s3 curve like we did all the other curves. We found out that dy by dx is positive. So water level is increasing in zone 3. So I plotted the increase in level in zone 3. Now to check the uh, values at the upper and lower limit. At the lower limit it is infinity which means it is going to meet normally with the channel water. You can see that water surface has touched the channel bottom normally. At upper limit, dy by dx is 0, which means it is asymptotical to the normal depth level. It reaches out to the normal depth level, but never actually touches it. So, this is the S3 curve. So, this is a com combination of S1, S2, as well as S3 curves in a steep slope channel, just like we showed a similar figure for M1, M2 and M3 curves. So, next what we are going to discuss are some useful tips for drawing the uh, water surface profiles. I have uh, shown the figures of M1, M2, M3 and S1, S2, S3 on the sides for you to understand these tips. Now, you can use these tips if the question is simply to plot them uh, or if it is simply asking you to draw the water surface profiles, you can easily uh, use these tips to simply draw them. But if you are, if it has been asked for a uh, lot of marks, it would be better if you uh, Use the formula, dynamic equations, find out the sign, uh, upper limit, lower limit, etc. and plot it if it is asked for higher marks. But otherwise, there are some very useful tips that can help you easily draw the curves. So now, let me explain. Always, whatever be the type of slope, zone 1 and zone 3, dy by dx will always be positive. You can check zone 1 of mild slope, zone 3 of mild slope, zone 1 of steep slope, zone 3 of steep slope, everywhere water surface is rising, dy by dx will always be positive in zone 1 as well as in zone 3. In zone 2, dy by dx will always be negative whether it is a steep slope curve, mild slope curve, whatever type of curve it is, if it is a zone 2, water surface will always be falling. This is another tip that you can think of if you want to draw the water surface profile. Water curves will always be normal to the critical depth level and to the channel bottom. So, wherever the critical depth level, if the water, if you can see here M2 curve, it is meeting critical depth level normally. M3 curve, it is meeting the critical depth level normally. M3 curve is meeting the channel bottom normally. Here, uh, zone 1, S1 curve is meeting the critical depth level normally. S2 curve is meeting the critical depth level normally. Um, S3 curve is meeting the channel bottom normally. So, whether when the water surface is touching the um, channel bottom or the critical depth level, it will always meet perpendicularly to these points. If we are talking about the normal depth level, whatever be the curve, it is always going to be asymptotical. So, here M1 curve asymptotical to NDL, M2 curve asymptotical to NDL. Uh, here you can see uh, S2 curve asymptotical to NDL, S3 curve asymptotical to NDL. Whatever be the curves, towards the NDL they will always be asymptotical. Water curves will always be parallel to the channel bottom. That is channel bottom as they tend to infinity. That is when in zone 1 especially, when water surface is tending to infinity, they are always going to be parallel to the channel bottom. So, you can see that from the S1 curve as well as from the M1 curve. So, these are a few tips that will help you 
plot these curves very very simply even without knowing any dynamic equation or without knowing the calculations just by knowing these tips you will be easily able to plot the curves this is you can use these tips only as a um, this is not a rule or anything i am explaining to you so that you can easily draw these curves please do not repeat these tips in the exams or write these tips down in the exams don't do that the only thing that you can do is you will be able to easily explain or you will be able to easily draw on the side and um, you will not go wrong in plotting the curves afterwards you can uh, write down the calculations on the side that is fine but using these tips plotting of curves will not go wrong using those tips i have actually plotted the c1 and c3 curves so i have plotted in c1 curve it's meeting the cdl and so it's uh, normal and towards infinity it is parallel to the channel bottom zone 3 to the channel bottom it is normal and uh, the curve is meeting the ndl and so it's the asymptotical c3 curve so this is c1 and c3 curve h2 and h3 curves this is the cdl so h2 curve is meeting normally now h2 is going down because it's a zone 2 curve and uh, as it tends to infinity it becomes parallel to the channel bottom which is horizontal now this is the zone 3 curve you can see that water is rising here it's dy by dx is positive towards the cdl it is perpendicularly meeting towards the ndl also it is perpendicularly meeting this is the adverse curves a2 and a3 again uh, a2 is falling down because dy by dx is going to be negative in zone 2 in the cdl it is meeting perpendicularly at the infinity it's becoming parallel to the channel bottom a3 is rising uh, because uh, it's a zone 3 curve at the cdl as well as at the channel bottom it is meeting perpendicularly so what you can do is i have just plotted it using the tips but you can actually plot these c2 c3 sorry c1 c3 h2 h3 and a2 a3 curves you can calculate using step 1 step 2 step 3 and step 4 and plot them on your own and work out the shape of the profiles on your own and compare it with the ones that i have shown here so these are a few questions for self assessment after you have gone through the whole thing i know that's a very lengthy topic but it's worth it it will usually come for 15 to 20 marks because it's from module 5 so if you go through them carefully and understood them please uh, attempt the self assessment questions also so thank you for listening uh, i know it's a long lecture uh, but i hope that you understood